So much divides us. Culture, race, religion, gender, the foods we eat, the walls we build. My goal is not death, but life. A life with freedom to be whomever you wish, so long as you do not harm others. Equality for all, security for all, freedom for all. Freedom from tribalistic squabbles that start as petty nothings and escalate into wanton murder. And I will provide that freedom. I will take on that burden for the people. Maybe I am the villain in your story, but I am the hero in mine. Sean Meta. Who's the best villain in the Marvel movies? Most of the people I know say Killmonger. The reason's pretty simple. He was right. The grievances brought up were correct. I live in a society built on the foundations of injustice, the most obvious being the slave trade and the genocide and conquest of the indigenous peoples of the Americas. There are others as well. So when Killmonger says, How do you think your ancestors got these? You think they paid a fair price? Or did they take it like they took everything else? He is correct. The age of empires was built on the exploitation of other people's lands through colonialism. Now don't get me wrong. This is not specific to Western powers. All regions had imperialism. This is sadly not a unique aspect of any specific culture. While we may dispute how Killmonger was going to solve the problem, there was no question that there was a problem. We still feel the residual waves of that history today. The Mad Dash for gold, land, drives these emperors, kings, and queens. They take from their own people, they take from other people, enslave and strip whatever has value from others based on the might of their arm and their willingness to kill and they will continue to send others to kill, to preserve or grow their own wealth. This system rewards murderers. And I will break that system. So if you decide that you will have a big bad evil guy in your campaign, you can use some straight up evil antagonist. And that is fun and has its own charms. It is great when the party can feel like they're questing to save the world from an ancient evil or a mustache-twirling Dark Lord. The Emperor from Star Wars is classic evil villainy, dark robe wizard who lusts for power and cackles at people, kills without a thought, and never contemplates the greater good. The greater good! But I feel, as Robert McKee points out in his book Story, a protagonist and his story can only be as intellectually fascinating and emotionally compelling as the forces of antagonism make them. What compels me is the complexity of the villain, the tickling feeling in the back of the player's minds that the villain may be the hero of the story. How are we to communicate if we don't speak the same language? How do we meet eye to eye when we only see our differences? Self-determination of the individual can only be achieved when we are united not as a village, a kingdom, a race, or species, but as a world. End the conflicts that beget fear, struggling, suffering, hunger, and people will experience true freedom. How do you do that? There are a couple of routes that you can take. The first thing that you can do is think of something that you're willing to fight for. For instance, there is a joy that some people feel with regards to the idea of punching Nazis. So do you can- I remember having joking discussions with my father as to how World War II shooters were great because you were just offing Nazis, which is basically the least morally objectionable avenue to engage in a massive amount of killing that you do in a first-person shooter. I mean, if you're gonna kill a bunch of video game bad guys, the ones who are literally attempting world domination and genocide 
seem like prime candidates. But as a parent, I also think about my kids. Would I fight for them? Absolutely. Tooth and nail, would I kill for them? I could definitely see circumstances where I would. So you come at it first from a position of something that you at least sympathize with, if not empathize with, and use that as a foundation. Mr. Freeze from Batman is just trying to find a way to finance the research to save his spouse from a fatal illness. Anyone who's dealt with the costs of medical care and the looming specter it can have in your life can empathize with that. Revenge is common motivation. Or fighting against injustice. You can look at various rebellions or revolutions, like the French Revolution. Maximilien Robespierre started his political life as a champion of equality under law for all the people in France. Opposition to the death penalty defended the rights of black French and French Jews to be citizens. He fought both by pen and sword for the liberation of France from the monarchy. In a speech in support of the abolition of slavery in France, when opponents of abolition argued that slavery was essential for the French empire to continue, he stated, quote, let the colonies perish rather than our principles. This same man orchestrated the reign of terror, where over 26,000 people were killed either by execution or rotting in a prison cell for being opposed to him or the revolution, even if some of that opposition was made up. This man of principle, opposed to the death penalty, just went murdering. Over 16,000 people went to the guillotine per his word alone. He lived long enough to become the villain. Those in power are only in power because they or their ancestors were the most proficient murderers. Their power is founded upon cruelty, but their ambition cannot be satiated because others of equal cruelty will stand in their way. So they must all be swept away like the demons of old were by the ancient champions. And I am those champions reborn. I am the completion of the moral arc of history. So you have your sympathetic foundation for a villain. Now you engage in an action strategy for that villain. What is the method that they will use to achieve their goal? In the Mr. Freeze example, he engages in crime, stealing the money or objects he needs to pursue his goals. Perhaps you have someone whose child is cursed or is doomed because of a deal made with an infernal patron and is trying to get some item to free themselves. But the item is of vital importance to the members of a local religion their holiest of holy items, granted directly from their deity. The massive divine vengeance to the local population could lead to starvation and death. In Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, the entire village suffered a drought because the Maharaja steals the stones from them. Maybe the item is held in a temple, protected by the clerics. They refuse to give it up, but the villain is desperate. So they engage in terror attacks against the clerics and villages to make them suffer enough to give it up. Perhaps it's a young wizard of a people long ago conquered. She is developing her powers to summon a demon army while gathering corpses for an undead horde to exact vengeance against a kingdom that wiped out her people. The problem is that the cemeteries are empty, so she needs bodies to fill the ranks of the undead army. So she starts to kill innocents, her lieutenants, also refugees, aid her along the way and provide the party with mini-bosses as they go through. Perhaps it's someone like Robespierre, someone who's actually fighting for freedom or equality or peace, just so that their society, which they love dearly, can survive. Even if their actions go outside of what would be acceptable in that society, I have a personal love of a character that feels that the ends justify the means. One of my favorite characters in any movie is the operative, from the movie Serenity. He sums up his philosophy when talking to Mao after massacring an entire outpost of people. It's not my place to ask. I believe in something greater than myself. A better world. A world without sin. So me and mine gotta lay down and die so you can live in your better world? I'm not going to live there. There's no place for me there any more than there is for you. Malcolm, I'm a monster. What I do is evil. I have no illusions about it, but it must be done. Love that sentiment. What I do is evil, but it must be done. That is the justification. They do evil so that a safe society can endure. They shoulder the burden of evil so others don't have to. Similar to Colonel Jessup in A Few Good Men. I want the truth! You can't handle the truth!
Son, we live in a world that has walls, and those walls have to be guarded by men with guns. Who's gonna do it? You? You, Lieutenant Weinberg? I have a greater responsibility than you can possibly fathom. You weep for Santiago and you curse the Marines. You have that luxury. You have the luxury of not knowing what I know, that Santiago's death, while tragic, probably saved lives. And my existence, while grotesque and incomprehensible to you, saves lives. You don't want the truth because deep down in places you don't talk about at parties. You want me on that wall. You need me on that wall. We use words like honor, code, loyalty. We use these words as the backbone of a life spent defending something. You use them as a punchline. I have neither the time nor the inclination to explain myself to a man who rises and sleeps under the blanket of the very freedom that I provide and then questions the manner in which I provide it. I would rather you just said thank you and went on your way. Otherwise, I suggest you pick up a weapon and stand a post. Either way, I don't give a damn what you think you are entitled to. Ooh. Chills. I love this because it shows how righteousness can quickly turn to self-righteousness. It can turn a hero into a villain. You can be nodding along with the character, but then see the inevitable, unconscionable conclusion. This is where you, as a game master, can manipulate the party. Because you can actually set it up pretty easily so that the players are rooting for the villain. Maybe they change their minds. Maybe they're fighting against them. Then they turn. Then they start supporting. Then, if you're really careful, you start to drop the Hints that were always there. Have the villain engage in an act of cruelty for a justifiable reason. We need to do this because it sends a message, especially if the other side does something cruel. Using the temple clerics as an example, they started enacting harsh punishments for anyone sympathetic to the terrorist, desperately seeking the item that they possess. Then, in response to a family giving this terrorist shelter, they arrest that family maybe even execute them. That leads the antagonist to engage in more exacerbated cruelty in response to send a message. But then it is more and more. You can see this done abruptly in Game of Thrones where Daenerys starts a rather sharp plunge into it, but you need to do it more gracefully, usually with an inciting incident revealing the antagonist's cruelty until they descend to a point where the party cannot follow. Then you have to. They have to decide on their next course of action. The party may debate or struggle. Let them. Even if they side with the antagonist, the villain, let them. Show them the results of their actions. Give them that freedom so that they know they molded the world with what they did. Maybe they regret it. Maybe the next campaign is a new group of adventurers fighting to free the land from the first group of adventurers. Traveling down this road, the possibilities are endless. You see, the other conquerors and so-called nobles are anything but. They don't fight for any noble cause, they fight for themselves. I fight for the people. It is not a choice. I do not elect to help the people per my own whims. I have a moral obligation. If I fail to act, people will suffer and die needlessly. I can prevent that. How harsh would history judge me if I sat behind my castle walls and only secured the lives of hundreds or thousands when I could secure the lives of millions or billions? Those that fight for their ability to remain cruel, to reinforce an unjust system or their false religions or lesser primitive cultures are tragic but necessary casualties to this new future. They will hold on to those things that divide us, but they will fail against our unity. Their futile struggle for independence will buckle and fall against the might of this vision. Sacrifices will be made. Many will perish in the holy fires of conflict. There will be blood on my hands without question. But I will lay myself down on the altar as a sinful sacrifice for this better world, this peaceful world, this world without war. And I will ascend as a god to protect this world. And you will know my sacrifice and honor me and worship me.
Thank you so much for watching, folks. This channel spreads purely by word of mouth, so it's really helpful for you to share it, retweet it, and spread it around social media. For more content like this, please be sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon so that you're notified when a new video drops, which I try to make about every two weeks at this point. I love engaging with you folks down in the comments section. Please, be friendly down there. Additionally, I stream on Twitch every Tuesday and Saturday night at 9.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. If you want to get more random thoughts. We have some very interesting conversations in chat as well, so it's not just me talking the whole time. And as always, roll dice, roll play, and roll with it.